for the yoga session we are going to continue with the theme pelvic health this is the seventh in the series hmm. so we will first begin with the uh, basics lying on back fold both legs heels closer to the hips foot parallel about 6 inches apart keep a blanket below the head neck at the center chin slightly towards the chest right palm on the abdomen left palm on the chest Watch your breathing. As you inhale, the bottom-most portion of the pelvis, then the middle of the abdomen, then top of the abdomen should expand all around. And as you exhale, the abdomen and then the pelvis has to contract. Try to breathe slowly, maybe about 78 breaths per minute. Our average breathing is about 40 to 15 times in a minute. So generally half of it is most people can do comfortably if you are little focused. And try to exhale a little longer than you inhale. Stretch both arms up. So be watchful about this breathing. So maintaining uh, this breathing is very, very important. Raise your right leg up, pull the knee cap, stretch the heel, toes towards the knee.
Press the left foot also. Tighten the back of the left thigh. Down. Chain. Left leg up. Pull the kneecap, straight the heel. Press your right foot. Activate the back of the right thigh. And uh, ensure that the sacrum, that the segment of the spine just below your lower back, does not take off the floor. Down. One more time, right leg up. Pull the kneecap, stretch the heel, feel the stretch of the back of the thigh and the calf muscle. Watch your pelvis, hips, lower back. Down. The next one, right leg up. Fold. Hold the knee, press the knee closer to the chest. Close towards the knee, tighten the back of both the thighs. Watch your breathing. Release the right leg. Chain. Left leg up. Fold, hold the knee, press the knee closer to the chest. Tighten the back of both the thighs. Breathe against the pressure of the thigh. Watch your abdominal cavity. Release left leg. Right leg again. Right leg up, fold, hold the knee, press the knee closer to the chest. Watch your gluteal muscles and uh, lower back. And then ensure that your sacrum is pressed towards the mat. Right leg, chain, left leg, fold, hold the knee, press the knee closer to the chest.
pay special attention to the pelvic cavity release left leg the next one right leg up fold padmasana take the heel as close to the root of the left thigh as possible stretch the toes up push the knee back right watch the region of the sacrum left leg fold it across toes up push the knee tighten the back of both the thighs Watch your pelvis as you inhale and exhale. You must sensitize the boundaries of the pelvis. Down. Right leg again. Fold it across. Push the knee. Tighten the back of both the thighs. Feel the knee capsules. Down. Left. Hold it across. the next one right leg up fold from left hand hold the ankle joint pull from right hand push the knee across the chest again toes up tighten back up both the thighs and flatten the sacrum towards the mat then i get that good stretch for the gluteal maximus muscle right leg chain left leg up fold hold the ankle joint pull and press the knee to the chest don't forget your right leg press the right foot right in the back of right thigh <coughs> and watch your breathing 
with special emphasis on the pelvis release left leg one more time right leg up fold all the ankle joint pull and press the knee from the right hand release right leg chain left leg up fold pull the ankle joint push the knee release left leg take the dupatta because today we are going to focus on upavishta konasana which calls for uh, the sideward movement of the hip the first as the abduction abduction of the hip so first we will do it in the supine posture that is in this lying down posture uh, put the dupatta around the front of the foot that is base of the toes and leg straight hold the dupatta from both hands pull the toss downward pull the knee cap then hold both at this from right hand relax the left hand on the left root of the thigh then slowly move the right leg to the right side right leg straight Pull the knee cap and then flatten the sacrum. You have to use the dupatta properly. You must keep pulling the foot and from the front of the foot you should push the dupatta so that the legs get straightened and feel the stretch. at the root of the thigh watch your breathing pay special attention to the pelvis slowly bring the right leg up hold the putta from both hands release right leg and chain put the the putta to the front of the left foot left leg straight
Pull the kneecap, feel the stretch in the back of the thigh and calf muscle. Hold both edges of the thigh from your left hand. Take the left hand. Sorry, take the left leg down. Press the left elbow. Right hand on the root of the right thigh. Then flatten the sacrum. And feel the stretch. Feel your pelvis. The left side, the right side, the bottom, the top. Feel the uh, lower diaphragm. That there is a diaphragm at the base of the pelvis. It's called the levator, any muscles. Feel that. Feel the base of the pelvis. In the front, you have the pubis, in the back, you have the sacrum sides you have the bones of the hips so try to feel the boundaries of the pelvis as you inhale and exhale slowly take your left leg up hold the butt off from both hands release left leg We shall repeat and try to see whether we can stretch a little more. Put the dupatta to the front of the right foot, right leg straight. Pull the dupatta, both edges of the dupatta from your right hand. Gently take it to the right side. Now try to uh, pull it closer to the trunk like this somewhere if you are here try to increase a bit maybe you can take the help of the left hand also if possible from right hand you can push it further while you ensure the sacrum is getting flattened towards the mat. Work your in, in your limits. You don't have to overstretch. Be gentle. Now slowly take the right leg up. Hold the butt out from both hands and release the right leg. Anything to do with the groin, you should be very, very careful and uh, external forces, that is somebody else pushing, uh, I mean, especially without understanding if they push, then there is a chance of uh, injuries like sprain, so be careful. Chain. The putta to the front of the left uh, foot. Stretch. Well, use the dupatta properly. Dupatta is functional, it is not ornamental. Like straight now, hold uh, both edges of the dupatta from. Left hand, take the left leg to the side. Leg straight. Keeping the leg straight, try to pull a little closer to the trunk. And then if uh, you want more intense stretch, from right hand hold the dupatta and from left hand further uh, push, I mean, yeah, push the 
left leg, closer to the trunk. Leg straight. Now slowly bring the left leg up, then left leg down. Slowly get up from the right side. Sit upright. Fold the blanket. Or you can have two pillows. Some three inches height is what is good. Then sit on top of the blanket, sit upright. hips on the blanket and legs down. We have already told you, uh, I think the reason why sitting at a height is always helpful because pelvic has a natural anterior tilt. Mm, so if you sit flat on the floor, it may, uh, especially for beginners, it may be difficult to keep the spine upright. So this is a good method. Be seated upright. We'll do a simple twisting to begin with. Uh, left hand on the right knee, right hand fingertips on the floor, turn. Breathe well. Breathe abdominally. Slowly come to the center and then chain. Right hand on left knee, left hand fingertips on the floor. In a exhale, As we inhale, the pelvis and abdomen should expand. As we exhale, they should contract and keep on twisting. So the pelvis gives a good rejuvenating, massaging moment. Slowly <coughs> come to the center. Now spread both legs apart. Watch your uh, you know, range. Mm -hmm. 
don't try to overstretch sit up right align the legs properly that's i think is more important Watch your breathing. Now in this posture, <clears throat> you can feel the pelvis better as you can see there is a good lateral stretch because of the movement of the thighs so do the following slowly inhale allow the pelvis and then the abdomen to expand then just relax exhalation happens automatically that is the passive phase phase of exhalation and uh, abdomen and pelvis you can feel the contraction towards the end of that phase contract the abdomen and in particular the pelvis for the deep in and exhale completely so that is the active phase of exhalation i repeat first slowly inhale follow the pelvis and then the abdomen to expand then simply relax the diaphragm moves into the chest abdomen and pelvis contract then further to that at the end of that phase of passive relaxed exhalation contract the abdomen and especially the pelvis deep in so that you can exhale a little longer and contract the uh, all the organs and muscles in the pelvis strongly do it keep the legs straight as you do this or the end when you contract the pelvis further try to contract the urinary and anal sphincters and pull them in so by that what happens is you are able to pull the perineum into you perineum is that region between the two excretory organs so that gives you a good movement for 
the sphincters as well as a good compressive force for the pelvis so you are trying to improve through the squeezing and relaxing action the blood circulation will be better for all the organs there all the muscles also are greatly helped i hope you got the point first you have to inhale then relaxed exhalation towards the end of the relaxed exhalation you have to engage the abdomen and pelvis muscles especially the pelvis the urinary anal sphincters also you should contract pull them strongly in then simply relax and slowly inhale then relax passive exhalation then active exhalation keep doing that that will help all your pelvic organs and muscles pelvis houses the erogenital organs the urinary bladder the prostate glands in men and these contractions will help then the in women the ovaries the uterus they all get a nice massaging effect okay join both the legs we will raise it upashta uh, konasana just to uh, be relaxed in the meanwhile we can do bharadwaj asana fold the legs to the side take the foot to the left side thighs running forward in line with the chest chest and navel up left hand on your right knee right hand fingertips on the floor in your exhale turn turn the neck also slowly come up then chain so in all these things actually the contribution from the posture is one thing but most important and uh, very effective thing is the use of the breath and if you want to use the breath properly the mind has to be focused and that is what is going to contribute to the success of the posture so this must be kept in mind so if you do it mechanically even if you spread the legs 180 degrees apart and you are not aware of your breathing the mind is elsewhere it shall not help much so you must understand the uh, effectiveness of the posture is not simply your flexibility it is actually your involvement at the level of the breath and the mind okay right hand on left knee left hand fingertips on the floor in a exhale turn
the twisting is all for the back Slowly come to the center, sit upright. Again, spread the feet apart. Leg straight, pull the kneecap, stretch the heel. Watch your breathing, watch your pelvis. Now we are going to do the following. Keep both uh, left hand and right hand fingertips on the floor. Turn the chest, orienting towards the right leg. Then straight the trunk up, lean forward. Take both hands and hold your right foot. Straight the trunk. The whole idea is not to go down. Whole idea is to stretch the trunk up. Keep your left leg straight. If this is difficult, you can take the help of the dupatta. From the dupatta, lock your foot, front of the foot, of course, then stretch the trunk up. Look up. Right. If possible, and you don't need the dupatta, else don't shy away from dupatta. Left leg absolutely straight. Breathe well. Slowly come up. Now when you do that again, you have to feel the pelvis both on the right side, left side. How they feel. Now chain. Turn towards the left side. Keep the fingertips and uh, twist the trunk to the left side. Lean forward. Hold the foot. Stretch the trunk diagonally up. Right leg straight. Slowly come up. We shall repeat uh, one more time. Now when you do that, 
Uh, especially when you turn to the right, you'll see that the left port actually lengthens. That you should experience through your breath. So turn, twist, keep the fingertips twist well, for which you have to, if you roll the thighs in, much of the stretch will be lost. So you should hold it straight. So thigh rolling in will actually uh, kill the stretch. So you have to keep it aligned, then turn. So that's why you should be watchful. Then turn, then bend forward, lean forward. Stretch well. If you can't catch the foot, please use the dipata. Breathe deep. Slowly come up. Then chain. Keep the fingertips, turn the trunk to the left side. Be mindful about the orientation of the right leg. Lean forwards. Hold the foot. Stretch the trunk. Watch your breathing. Breathing should be slower. Exhalation should be longer. Slowly come up. Seated upright. Mm-hmm. Bring the legs closer, sit in Swastika. Now we are going to try two breathing techniques, Bastrika and Kapalabhati with Upoishta Konasana. In Upashta Konasana, uh, well, we have done in Baddha Konasana also, you can see that the access to the pelvis is uh, far more effective. So spread both legs apart.
లెగ్ స్ట్రైట్ హిప్స్ అట్ హైట్ పుల్ ది నీ క్యాప్ వాట్ ఎవర్ యూ కెన్ లీవ్ ది హ్యాండ్స్ డౌన్ లైక్ దిస్ ఆర్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు బి కంఫర్టబుల్ యూ కెన్ హోల్డ్ ది హ్యాండ్స్ లైక్ దిస్ ఆర్ రెస్ట్ దెమ్ అప్వర్డ్ up to you whatever is your comfort watch your breathing as we inhale the pelvis and the abdomen should expand in the tarda as we exhale they should contract watch the movement of the diaphragm that is diaphragm here the top because there is a diaphragm even in the bottom at the pelvis so top the major muscle of the breathing it will be like this in it relax straight into the chest then it will flatten towards the abdomen during inhalation and it flexes into the chest during exhalation so what that uh, movement so huge uh, wide uh, muscle now we are going to do bastrika means you have to contract the diaphragm push it down inhale quickly forcefully then contract the abdomen expel the breath quickly forcefully be gentle uh, let us limit to only 30 cycles and uh, we already told the precautions cautions so please be guided by those things uh, we will do only 30 times and uh, be gentle you have to push the diaphragm down inhale quickly forcefully then contract the abdomen expel the breath quickly forcefully so both inhalation and exhalation are forceful and active in bastrika be gentle when you have time please check sit in swastika asana and do this sit in baddha kona asana and do this upeshta kona asana do this point out just with respect to the pelvis how they matter and keep breathing abdominally do another 30 cycles of bastrika forced inhalation forced exhalation
be relaxed. And as soon as you relax, you will have a, a short face of uh, Kevala Kumbhaka. Enjoy that. Few seconds. Then continue to breathe abdominally. Then, now we will do Kapala Bhati. You have to contract the abdominal muscles, expel the breath quickly, forcefully, relax the muscles. The air automatically enters. In. I repeat. Active exhalation, passive inhalation. You have to contract the abdominal muscles, expel the breath quickly, forcefully, relax the muscles. The air automatically enters. In. Now in this you should feel because in Kapalabhati the lower quadrant, uh, the lower portion of the abdomen is more active, then you can feel the pelvis here better. Well only 30 seconds. Join the legs. Sit upright in Swastikasana. So in our next class, please find a place near a wall. So we will see how uh, the wall can be of great use in doing some of these uh, postures effectively and of course safely. Salutation to Sage Patanjali. Take a deep breath. Om. Yoga na jittasya bade na vajam. Malam Chari Rasya Chavaidya Gena Yopakarotam Pravaram Muninam Patanjalim Pranjaliran Adosmi Hari Shri Krishna Arpanamastu, Shri Gurdhanamaha, Shubhamastu.